My dear Frodo, you asked me once if I had told you everything there was to know about my adventures. While I can honestly say I have told you the truth, I may not have told you all of it. Bilbo Baggins, I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. Getting the Hobbit trilogy off the ground was a long process, of course, due to studio issues and rights issues. Mm. You always intended to be involved with the new films, but didn't originally intend to return as the director. What was the point that you realized, this is happening, I'm doing this? <laughs> well, Guillermo del Toro worked on the movie as a director. Um, we wrote the script with him. Because of the, the constant delays, he had other films on his schedule and he had to um, um, leave. And it still took a, another few months before we knew that we were able to make the film and during that few months I, I thought well you know what I, I actually really like the script that we wrote and, and I'd sort of come to like the idea of returning as director I thought I do I really want somebody to bring somebody else on now and I thought no I'd rather do it myself did you originally think that you didn't want to do it just because obviously it's an incredibly grueling process it wasn't so much the the, the, the workload it was more the fact that I, I was worried I'd be competing with myself I, I, I thought well how satisfying is that going to be? Would I be too stressed about what, I, what I'd done before? I got over that pretty quickly, really, because it's a different script, it's a different story, a lot of different you know, new characters. And it's also got a fresh tone. It's, it's much more comedic um, than The Lord of the Rings was. And so uh, once, I, once I really you know, understood all that, I, I thought, yeah, this is a different movie. It'll be fun. Swords are named for the great deeds they do in war. What are you saying? My sword hasn't seen battle? I'm not actually sure it is a sword. More of a letter opener, really. Tell me about putting together the character of, of Bilbo. I'm guessing that it's some formula of the book, of you, of Ian Holm, maybe Yeah, 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 he's in there, yeah. At the risk of sounding uh, oversimplistic, it, you read the script, you know, you read the book and you read the script and go, OK, I think he's a bit like that. And uh, you look at Ian Holm and go, all right, so he's got bits of that. The rest of it is your own decisions in conjunction with Peter, you know, and what is appropriate and what isn't appropriate. You know, for Peter, uh, apparently everything that I did, said and thought for my entire life meant that I should be playing Bilbo. I didn't think that, I didn't realise that, but um, according to him, I've been, you know, casting for it since I was about two. I give the makeup department on The Hobbit incredible credit as the face of, of yourself and that of your character, Thorin Oakenshield, are not really recognizable as the same face at all. Uh, well, that's interesting because the face that they originally started with was was much more extreme than mm -hmm. the one we finished with. Tammy Lane, who's an Oscar-winning uh, prosthetics artist, and Jen Stanfield, who did all the hair, worked with Weta to create this look. And I had a sculptor called Jamie Beswarick who did, I think he worked through seven versions of my face. So they, they, they take a, a cast of your head and then they slowly sculpt a prosthetic that's going to match your face. Who did you kill? No one, I swear. What in Dirty's name is going on? You are being hunted. I understand that you weren't entirely sure that you wanted to return to the character for the Hobbit trilogy. Is that true? Yeah. There are pros and cons with every job. It's, sure. it's, it's never absolutely simple. But there was so much that was right about this uh, job. Familiar territory in a country that I adore with very talented uh, people uh, making it. But they did take an awful long time to decide that they were going to do it. And yes, they two did. and a half years, it was yeah. on and off, and I was keeping myself free, also uh, buffering myself against the possibility that it wouldn't happen by thinking how relieved I would be not to have to return to a part I'd already played when I could be getting on doing other things. But when it came to it, I didn't want anybody else to play Gandalf, and uh, we were in the unusual situation of... Uh, making a film that we knew millions of people wanted just to make. I think that Gollum actually benefits from the 48 frames per second. He seems more tactile, more mm. real than he ever has before. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, I think the combination of 48 frames a second with 3D as well, it just, that you almost, your brain cannot deny that they, ex you know, that, that, that Bilbo and Gollum exist in the same space. Was it a challenge to find Gollum again after nine years? It, it, it was in the sense that he'd been so kind of absorbed into the public consciousness in a big way that, that, that I'd heard lots of impersonations sure. of him and, uh, you know, people had made in their own. So I had to kind of stop listening to all of that and <laughs> sort, of, sort of filter out all of that just kind of leading up to production. And I felt, I, I actually did feel like I was doing a bit of an impersonation of him myself, mm -hmm. you know, weirdly. Weirdos, we know safe paths for hobbies. Safe paths in the dark. Shut up! I didn't say anything. He wasn't talking to you. 
Last time you and Andy brought Gollum to life, actually, his, his motion capture performance was recorded separately, right, and then married to the live action footage, mm -hmm. and that wasn't the case on Hobbit. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, see, interestingly, what happened was, back when we were even doing that on Lord of the Rings, we were all thinking, well, okay, now that we know, you know motion capture works, wouldn't it have been great to capture Andy live in set? So. We were kind of working towards that. So with King Kong, we figured out how to do facial capture. With Avatar, we learned how to put everything together and do a virtual camera. And so, you know, when Hobbit was coming up, we were thinking, this is, this is perfect, we're gonna be ready for it. The advertising and merchandising, of course, is not a small component of The Hobbit. Mm. And that includes seeing your face on everything from activity books to little plastic guys. Oh, yes. There, there you are. May I see? Thank right? you. Right, absolutely, that, that's yours if you'd like. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that. Is, is that bizarre, or, or do you not even think about it? I wish I had more of a neck, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bizarre that the fact I, I'm managing to live with no neck. But it's fun, and I understand it, and I knew that was the ship I was getting on. Yeah, oh, you know. this is this is yours. Is this now. mine? Thank yes, you very much. Pass well, that along to anyone who wants to see you as a tiny. I know people. I know people who will want to. Uh, some people already do see me as a tiny oh. little being. Home is now behind you. The world is ahead. Well, that could have been worse. <laughs>